Here's all the strange news from the last week. Today we'll be covering updates on the Havana syndrome, the U.S. Navy monitoring equipment, which we will connect to UFOs. A media presenter mentioned that UFOs could be spiritual entities, and if you have goats, work with goats, or really like goats, you won't want to stick until the end for the last article. I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to get into it. I'll be honest with you, it's very odd to do strange news on... What day is it today? Monday. It's very bizarre. But thank you for everyone that's able to tune in on a Monday versus a Friday. Work is being kind of crazy and some things are going to be happening to this channel. So make sure to be following me across platforms like Twitter or Discord or even on the community page on YouTube so that you stay up to date on all of the things that are happening here. So getting into the Havana Syndrome... Either you know about it or you don't, and it's totally okay if you don't, because I'll give you a background on this. What's really interesting is that Professor Christopher Green, a forensic neuroimaging expert and former CIA officer, has revealed that hundreds of military officers have suffered injuries, including brain damage and burns, after encounters with UFOs. Now, Green was commissioned at around 2010 by OSAP slash ATIP, that should ring a bell, which, by the way, is a secret, used to be secret, $22 million defense program that monitored UFOs. And he was tasked to write a paper on injuries from close encounters with anomalous craft. Let me say this. I was not familiar with the Havana syndrome until ex-chief of ATIP, Lou Elizondo, had mentioned it. Before then, I was like, what the heck is this? And so he brought the like the basic knowledge of it to a lot of people, myself included. And it's interesting here, and this, this, uh, this article is, according to the Daily Mail, apparently Professor, Professor, <laughs> that should be a word, Professor Cr Christopher Green gave an interview with the Daily Mail providing this information. And the story gets kind of touchy, kind of confusing, uh, mainly because when someone speaks out about something, they're either telling the truth or they're a part of the disinformation campaign. You got to make up your own mind on which one you think it is. I think it's interesting that he was a former CIA officer working with ATIP slash Arrow and now providing this information that he did conduct investigations on people that had close encounters with UFOs and then had the Havana syndrome that took place soon after these odd encounters. So take it or leave it. I'm just providing this information and you can make up your own mind. But Green stated that he dealt with hundreds of patients, including special forces officers and other military personnel who were hurt after interacting with unidentified craft, some of whom later passed away. And some of the injuries resembled the mysterious Havana syndrome, which intelligence agencies believed could be a series of clandestine attacks on U.S. diplomats by a foreign power using targeted microwaves. That's what people are saying. But at least here, people have this idea that the Havana syndrome has to do with close encounters with unknown craft. Because these Let's think about this. Let's let's take a step back and let's think about this just for a moment. These craft, let, let's say that they are not ours and they are coming from outer space. Outer space is radioactive. Okay? People don't people don't talk about that, but it is. So yeah, when it's coming into our atmosphere, it's still going to have that radiation around those objects, and when you get close to it, yeah, you could get a little get some some of those side effects. Um, for instance, a great example of this is during the Rendlesham Forest incident with John Burroughs. It's believed that he had radiation poisoning, his gums went completely white, and his medical documents were classified for a few decades. He couldn't get the help that he needed because no one was able to access his medical records. So when we think of it like that, it's easier to understand. Hopefully, it's easier for you to understand as well. So Green's unclassified paper titled Clinical, Medical, Acute, and Subacute Field Effects of 
human neurological tissues describe symptoms of brain damage and burns um, sustained by patients from interactions with and even abductions by UFOs. And the professor believes that some of the injuries arose from patients being too close to subtly to subtle, highly powered microwaves and suggest that soldiers could have been accidentally hit with powerful radio or electromagnetic frequencies from the propulsion systems of these strange hovering and rapidly moving craft. I love doing these shows because we're able to talk about these crazy things that you're not going to find in like your mainstream news. This is where we really have to think outside of the box, think of all the possibilities, and consider everything. These shows, it's never, all right, here's the information, and there you go, like I'm spoon-feeding it to a baby. It's nothing like that. I provide you the information, and then you can take the time now or later to really think about it and digest it. And that's just like my favorite highlight of these shows. There's more to this and I will place that link in the description box below for you to read on your own time. Let's get into our next one because we're mentioning Tucker Carlson. You love him, you hate him, it doesn't matter. What's what the reason why I'm bringing this up is because he did a recent interview with the Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan experience and after what a few years of doing UFO research. He had his own show called The UFO Files on Fox. He he spoke to a lot of people, even with like, like cattle mutilations as well. And so when he was giving this interview with Joe Rogan, he had mentioned that they might not be these things that are operating these UFOs. They might not be extraterrestrial beings, but rather spiritual entities that have coexisted with humanity throughout history. This is a bold claim. And yet we've heard of this before. Yes, it's more prevalent to have that conversation for those that speak with other people that are have this big interest with UFOs. But for an a media presenter to say something like this on air, it's a big deal. It really is. Some might disagree with me, and that's totally okay. But from my perspective, looking at this on, okay, how much influence does he have on an audience? A lot. He has a lot of influence. And for him to say that, can we? Are, are we allowed to bring in the religious aspect here? Or is that too much taboo? Serious question, because not everyone will take the bait on that one. But when you say spiritual entities, yeah, you're, you're talking about angels, demons, ghosts, and all of these kinds of Things that are in the category of the paranormal and the spiritualist movement as well. But it also brings in a theory that Jacques Vallée had mentioned, gosh, decades ago, one of the first people really to mention that maybe these entities that are operating these craft are not extraterrestrial, but could be interdimensional, could be ultra dimensional. And since I want to say the year 2020 onward, this conversation has become more mainstream than ever before. And when you have people of this high level of what influence being a kind of celebrity, it goes to show that this topic of interdimensional spiritual entities is just becoming a little bit more prevalent than before. But I got to ask you, those listening to this live you're awesome, by the way. What do you think about this statement? It's not even a question what Carlson had said. It's a statement. What do you think about that? Hmm? Well, while, while you answer that question, there's a little bit more to this because the conversation between Carlson and Rogan comes in this heightened public interest, as you know, when it comes to UFOs, with speculation linking them to religious visitations or even interdimensional beings being a reoccurring theme in discussions on the topics for decades. We can even bring in the the article that we covered last week where News Nation had did an interview with Tim Burchett, Representative Tim Burchett, and he said, the topic of UFOs doesn't affect my Christian Catholic faith. 
I can believe in both. And why can they not coexist together? Well, these aren't the exact same conversations. They're very similar. And it's displaying to the world that more and more people are considering the mere possibility. Jazz says, it's, it's pretty crazy, really. You know what? It is, it is pretty wild. Paul says, didn't Albert say wormholes were possible? Yes, he did. Albert Einstein. But you have the um, Einstein-Rosen bridge, right? Gosh, almost, almost a century ago now. That was crazy. But yes, and funny enough, we're going to kind of get into that in a little bit later, actually. Yes, vast read my mind, the Einstein-Rosen bridge. That's right. So there is more to this. That link will be below. But let's get into our next one, talking about the Navy. Because the U.S. Navy, this is actually really interesting. Because the, the U.S. Navy is planning to test its first high-powered microwave weapon. We're bringing this back. We're doing a full 360 to the Havana Syndrome. But there is more to this. By the way, it's known as Project Meteor. And Meteor is in all caps on a seafaring vessel as early as the year 2026, so in two years. And this experimental weaponry is designed to emit beams of intense electromagnetic energy to disable the electronics of drones, offering a low per cost deep magazine and tactically significant range. Now, microwave weapons are part of the U.S. military's interest in direct energy systems, which also include later lasers, sound microwaves, particle beams, and are seen as um, seen as a response to the rise of low cost drones that have significantly challenged modern warfare. I want to bring this into two points because this we really need to talk about this. This is very important. One, you have the aspect where you're dealing with high microwaved, high powered microwaved weapons. Yes, you're dealing with the Havana syndrome that we literally just discussed that a few minutes ago. Now, the second piece is right now for the last few, the last few years, people that mention, oh, I had a UFO sighting immediately. People's thoughts are, you must have seen a drone. Was it a drone? Let's continue on with that thought, please. If this technology is implemented consistently across the United States, maybe, maybe even across all countries, wouldn't it be easier for there to be UFO research? Because let's say it, it is a drone. They could just use Project Meteor and affect the drone's capabilities to operate. And then you think to yourself, Okay, well, that checks off all the boxes. It's not a UFO, it's a drone, which I think would be very beneficial to Arrow and all the previous projects since the late 1950s, where they could use this kind of technology and benefit their argument that like, nope, nothing to see here. All these UFOs, they're not extraterrestrial, they're foreign adversary. That report that we got a month ago was BS. It was a spit to people's faces. But if you have technology like this, it's going to benefit them. And you know what? It's going to benefit the general public because um, they will know the difference between some a truly unknown craft and a drone. Do you, do you see what I'm saying here? Do you, are you picking up what I'm laying down? I think it's I think it's really interesting. Now, they say the US Navy says that it will not operate until 2026. Could it be operating right now? Possibly, but it won't be made public until that time frame. Jazz says seems like an ideal weapon. Yes, when dealing with high powered microwaves, yeah, it's it's a big deal. P-Dub says, Project Meteor is an interesting choice for a code name. Why do you say that? I want to hear your thoughts on why you think that is interesting. I think it's a very cool name, to be honest with you. But yeah, why, why choose that? Every name has a meaning behind it. Now, the public doesn't usually know what that meaning is, but we can merely guess. Awesome. 
Oscar just says, yes, nice. <laughs> I think I have one more image here talking about the U.S. Navy. And what they're really pushing here when it comes um, to this article is just really saying that with Project Meteor, it's going to be really cost effective, really and like easily ex um, accessible drone technologies by small armies and even guerrilla groups, which has led to concerns about drone swarms that could coordinate dozens, if not hundreds, or even thousands of machines in a coordinated attack. It's very similar to those light shows that people are doing now with drones. We actually saw that in what last season of Skinwalker Ranch. It's the exact same, but then these ones would have different kinds of equipment, like monitoring equipment or even weapons, which can be a bit spooky, right? So I, I can see the threat factor here. Next one, uh, my favorite topic of all time. Well, one of several, and it's black holes. I don't know what it is. And I say this every time. I don't know what it is, but just black holes, they have swallowed up my heart. They're so cool. And what's really awesome is that according to Universe Today, Astronomers have discovered the most massive stellar black hole in the Milky Way galaxy to date, named Gaia BH3, with a mass of 33 solar masses. It surpasses the previous record holder, being Cygnus X1, which has only 21 solar masses. <laughs> so we're looking at, got 33, 21? Do the math. Let's see who can do it the fastest because it ain't going to be me. It's 12. It wasn't that fast, but it was kind of fast. So the discovery was made using data from the uh, European Space Agency Gaia spacecraft. That's why it's called the Gaia black hole, obviously, which detected the black hole's presence through the wobbling motion of its stellar companion. And it's located. Listen to this. It's located only 2,000 light years away. In terms of space, that is pretty diddly darn close. So the Gaia BH3 is, it literally says it here, it's remarkably close in cosmic terms and is considered a once-in-a-lifetime discovery by the researchers involved. You know, we, we got our first black hole image just a few years ago. The first one that was discovered was less than like, what, two and a half decades ago? I mean, the concept and the research of black holes is so new. It's so recent that we don't know. A, we actually don't know anything about black holes. However, they have been theorized since the time of Einstein in the early 1900s. And yet here we are just really getting a foothold in attempting to understand black holes. All we really know is that it just swallows up stars and planets, creates spaghettification, and it affects time due to its gravitational pull. That's the overall gist that we know about black holes. And if there's stuff that I'm missing, tell me. Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. I want to learn anything and everything about black holes that I possibly can. And whenever I come across a cool article, we're covering it. Covering it. If it has to deal with black holes. I think it's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Even gets me just like warm. All right, I got another article for you. This one's for all of my coffee lovers. And here's a really cool picture of a black hole. But this one's for my coffee lovers. And it wouldn't be strange news if we didn't cover AI. Hold on, Christina. You just said coffee. Now you're saying AI? Yes. Yes, because in this article, they are working together. Because according to AP News, there is this coffee store, this like coffee roasting store that has collaborated with a local AI consultant to create a brand new coffee blend called AI Conic. Instead of like iconic, you have AI Conic using 
artificial intelligence. And the project aims to explore how AI can assist in traditional artisan profession of coffee roasting, which is highly valued in Finland, where this company is, which super cool fact, Finland is the world's largest coffee consumer per capita. I really thought, and I'm not even joking, and it's okay if I sound dumb, I really thought it was going to be Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil. I thought any of those three countries was going to be the largest coffee consumer, consumer per capita. But it's Finland. I love, I love learning new things. Like, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, I don't, I don't want to nerd out too much on that. But this company, and it's called Kaffa's Cafe. That's a tongue twister. It has different types and flavors that were created by AI. And the technology crafted a blend that would appeal to coffee enthusiasts' tastes, pushing the boundaries of conventional flavor combinations. For instance, the resulting AI conic blend, which consists of four different types of coffee bean from Brazil, Colombia, Ethiopia, and Guatemala, have surprised CAFA's managing director and founder because usually the people in general really only blend between two and three coffee beans from different parts. But AI was like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna break the narrative. We are going to shatter the walls and the windows, and we're gonna mix four beans, because why not? And they did exactly that. Now, if you were just casually walking through Finland and you came across an AI cafe for coffee, knowing that the blend was created by AI and the graphic designs, by the way, here's an image for those watching this on a video platform. They even created the marketing for this, like the, the graphic design. Would you try it? Would you trust AI's fake taste buds? Yes, I would. I would try it because I, I will try any food once. I like you might as well. You only live once. You might as well try all the foods at least once unless it has pickles in it. Then I will not. I will not eat it. Same with olives. I struggle with olives on that as well. But looking at this image, it's 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 really nice, actually. You're able to see the fun colors. You're able to see that kind of graphic touch to it. Maybe the, maybe the word graphic isn't the proper word, but this AI touch feel like we're jumping into the future kind of art. At least that's how I'm perceiving it. Now, my vocabulary is not ideal when attempting to describe almost anything, but that's as good as it's going to get. Maybe someone with a beautiful, flowery vocabulary can attempt to describe this kind of art form. I'm going to give you that challenge for those watching this on a video platform, either in the live chat or in the comments. Attempt to describe this image right here. Like that. <laughs> John says, agree about the olives. Yeah. So in like the Venezuelan dish that you only have during Christmas, they're called ayacas. They're amazing. They're totally delicious. But they have olives in it. And I will always pick them out. You know, it takes two days to make ayacas. Like it, it's, it's a laborious process. But if you know anyone that's Venezuelan or if you go to a Venezuelan restaurant in December, make sure to try ayacas ayakas at least once because they're really good minus the olives p says kind of reminds him of a stamp okay maybe kind of looks like one it'd be a nice stamp for an envelope oscar says can we trust ai with making coffee for humans I guess you won't know until you try it. <laughs> Maybe not the best answer, but you won't know until you try it. Right now, am I hesitant? Yes, very. But if I were to try it, then maybe I'd be a little bit less hesitant. Ah, 
Mr. Webb says, simple yet elegant. I agree with that one. I think it really does knock off those two points on my checklist. Muy cool, says Anthony. I like the Spanglish. That's how I speak at home, too. <sighs> let's see, let's see, before we move on. Looks like liquid. Coffee can turn into a liquid. It's pretty cool stuff. And then we got one more for you. Talking about goats. For those that stuck around until the end, you're awesome. Hit that like button right down below. If and only if you're enjoying the show. Because now we're talking about goats. Goats are super cute until you look at their eyes and you see these rectangles. That's when it gets a little bit creepy. But, and this, this is making international news, by the way. But British sheep farmers have discovered an unusual solution to manage their herds. And they're using Axe Africa body spray, known as Lynx Africa in the UK. And this overpowering scent of the deodorant has proven effective in calming these rams and helping all these other lambs to be more calm and not to mate. But who in the right mind would have thought, you know what, I'm going to spray some Axe body spray on these goats and see what happens. I don't know if you were in the era, but I definitely was. Back in middle school and high school, boys would just spray Axe all over them until they were almost coughing up blood. And then they would walk around thinking that like they were the biggest stud in the entire school. And of course, everyone was attempting to run away as fast as possible to attempt and leave that musky, disgusting smell several miles away. But when you're in a classroom, you can't run away from it. And I just put like a little, a little spritz here and there. It's not bad. But when you put a lot, I mean might as well just take me to a gas chamber instead it's so intense but for this farmer he's like hey other farmers come on look at this and he sprays axe on the goats and like look now they're all super calm now they're not mating like crazy isn't that genius and so for these farmers living in these small towns going to the corner store to buy axe they're totally sold out you can't find it anywhere anymore so you make sure if you have any goats to buy it in bulk. <laughs> but in addition to its usefulness with rams, Axe Africa also helps with, um, with these small orphaned lambs as well. Because you have Kathleen Jenkins, another sheep farmer in the UK, and she uses the body spray to eliminate the natural scent of both the lambs and the iwi. Ewi, tricking the mother into believing the lamb it, um, is her own. That's pretty crazy. And I don't think I said, is it Ewi? Is it Ewi? I am not a farmer or I don't know that much about goats either. So that word, it looks like a little emoji to me, the E-W-E. -E. But she noticed that like, yeah, if you just spray these lambs and get rid of their musky smell, a mother a mother goat will take him in and say, yeah, sure, you're, you're now my child. Now let me raise you. Buy that axe in bulk, everyone. If and only if you have goats and lambs and rams. But don't don't be putting it on yourself in like bucket amounts. Okay? Nobody wants that and nobody needs that. Is it pronounced ill? Is it for real? Or use? I I am not sure which one it is, but it's E W E. Ewe? Ewe? You, emu. Oh, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Laura says it's pronounced you. What on earth are you guys talking about? It's like saying the word colonel, and there's no R's in colonel, and yet it's pronounced no. There are some things that bother me. That is one of them, and the name Sean. But when it's spelled S E A N, the letters do not match the sound. And it, 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 it irritates me very much. But if, if you spell Sean like S-H-A-W-N, 
we're good. We're fine. Everything's okay. Everything is copacetic. But when you spell it all crazy, down in the dungeons you go. No brownie points for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now I know it's pronounced you. Good to know. Actually, a lot of people are telling me this. It's you. Nice, nice, nice. You guys are so smart. You're so amazing. All of you. Everyone's killing it. And now you just heard my slight rant on crazy words that sound nothing like how they're spelled. <laughs> Those are all the articles that we have for today. Out of the ones that we covered, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments as well. For myself, I think it's really interesting to hear from Professor Christopher Green to talk about his research when it comes to the Havana Syndrome when he was hired by OSAP and ATIP. So hearing that, I think, is is worth people's time, at the very least, just to read. And then also bringing in the topic of black holes cannot go wrong with that. And I had a pretty good laugh with the goats and axe. And you know what? Nothing, nothing beats a good laugh. But let me ask you, which one was your favorite? Dangerous says, stinky goats and black holes. Oh, nice. All work and low pay says Havana syndrome was my fave. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Some knucklehead says Havana syndrome equals U.S. meteor for Project Meteor. Dun, dun, dun. Someone's connecting the dots over there. Could be. Paul says coffee. Nice. Can't go wrong with some good coffee. For me, I got to have my coffee incredibly sweet that it almost tastes nothing like coffee. Terrible. I know. It makes my ancestors turn in their graves. But I like my coffee just more sugar than coffee. <laughs> Robert says the microwave weapon. Talking about the Project Meteor. All right. All right. They were all great. John just won some brownie points because that, that is the right answer. They were all great. But, of course, you can have one favorite. P says the axe and goats. Nice. Goats were my favorite. Goats seem to be like, like, like they were the winner for this week's strange news. Um, I do want to mention that we're going to have some cool videos coming out this week. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of the shows. Oh, and before you head out, this is really important. For Friday, it's going to be strange news. Episode 100, we are having a 100th anniversary. You want, I'm telling you, you want to tune in live for that because we will. Be, I will be doing giveaways, giving out free merch. So you do not want to miss that to celebrate our 100th strange news anniversary. And I'll be having a guest. His name is John Russell. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And also I have a bunch of other shows coming out this week. And if you like fun facts, check out my channel called Fact Sophical. You can just scan this QR code or that link is right down below to learn easy, fun, and really amazing facts that you can use to impress anybody. That is it for today. I will see you next time. Be safe and remember, keep your eyes on the skies. If you enjoy the strange and the mysterious UFOs, the paranormal and cryptids, this channel is for you. So make sure to subscribe as I do three videos right here every single week and hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of the bonus content I post right here.